So by the way, that's a big clue for when you should use a deal Zalter on a synthesis problem. If you're doing a synthesis problem, um, so notice that deal Zalter gives you a six-membered ring with a double bond. A deal Zalter reaction gives you a six-membered ring with a double bond. So if you're doing a synthesis problem and you see that the product has a six-membered ring with a double bond, that's a strong clue, especially for this next midterm, that you're supposed to use a deal Zalter reaction. However, even if it just has the six-membered ring without the double bond, you still might want to use Dills-Alder because you can always get rid of this double bond now by doing a hydrogenation. That comes up a lot in your syntheses as well. Um, even if the final product just has a new six-membered ring, maybe they want you to do a Dills-Alder and then hydrogenate that to get rid of the double bond. But if you see a six-membered ring with a double bond, that's a very strong clue that you should do a Dills-Alder. All right, does this make sense so far? All right. Um, now, um, one thing that a lot of students don't study enough is retro deals alder. Your instructor really likes retro deals alder reactions, so we need to understand how to work those. Well, those are just the exact reverse of a forward deals alder reaction. Um, what does it take to do a retro deals alder? Well, all it takes is heat. Um, but you have to have a starting material that could have been made by a forward deals alder. You need a starting material that could have been made from a forward deals alder, and you just add heat. Well, could this have been made from a forward deals alder? Yes, because it's a six-membered carbon ring with a, sing with a double bond. Anytime you have a six-membered carbon ring with a double bond, you know that you can do a retro deals alder on that. Students tend to have a hard time doing this backwards. So now we have to go backwards and figure out where this came from. Uh, one thing that might be very helpful here is to put in the asterisks and the dots. So where should the asterisks and the dots go here? Well, the asterisks don't go here, right? Notice that the new double bond here is not where the asterisks are. It's the atoms that are connected to the double bond. So you can use this as the model. Maybe I should have kept the old uh, example up here. This is what, what I mean. This is what I meant when I said when you're doing a hard deals alder problem, it's helpful just to write down a simple, the simplest example as a model. So we can see here that in the product of a forward deals alder, the starred atoms are the ones that are connected to the double bond. So these should be the starred atoms, and we can see that the dotted atoms are the ones that are connected to the starred atoms. So those should be these over here. All right, and now we have to draw in the electron pushing arrows. Well, one thing that we know that we're going to move is the pi bond. So we can start by moving that pi bond. And now we're going to put in two more arrows. And after those two more arrows, we have to end up back where we started, because this is going to be a cyclic reaction. Just like the forward reaction is cyclic, the backward reaction has to be cyclic. Um, so where should I put the tail of the next arrow? Well. Um, let's see, because we're forming a new pi bond here, we need to make room by kicking this bond off. Otherwise, we would break the octet rule here. This should make sense, because this is one of the bonds that was formed in the forward deals alder. Remember that in the forward deals alder, we formed the bond between the star and the asterisk. So it makes sense that we're going to get rid of it in the retro deals alder. We're just reversing everything we did in the forward deals alder. Let me just point out now the, a very common student mistake that I see a lot of students make. A lot of students try to do this arrow. This seems logical to them because it's starting where this one left off. But this doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't both form a, a new bond here and remove a bond from the same region of space. That's just not something that we don't do. Instead, the tail should go on this adjacent bond. OK, uh, and now we just need one more arrow. Where should the tail of that go? 
Well, the common student mistake would be to put the tail here. But it doesn't make sense to put the tail here because this is where we're forming a new bond. We should put the tail on this bond and then move that over here. Oh, they've already gone straight to the products. Okay. It makes sense that we have to break this bond because this is between the star and the dot. Well, this was formed in the forward reaction, so it should be broken now. Uh, and notice how these really did form a cycle because this atom is losing these electrons and gaining these electrons. This is how that you know that you're doing this right. This should strike you as very easy. So why am I spending so much time on this? Because your instructor is not as nice as me. On the test, your instructor is going to give you a huge molecule where there just happens to be a six-membered ring with a double bond, and then it can become very difficult to figure out how to do the retro deals alter. So it's important to talk it through in the simplest case. Start by moving the pi bond, um, and then you draw two more arrows that end up coming back to where you started. And again, don't put a tail over here. Put the tail on the next bond over. And don't put a tail over here. Put a tail on the next bond over until we get back to where we started. All right, and now we can... Uh, what we get in here. This bond, uh, let's see, this bond is now broken. Again, it helps to keep putting in the stars and the dots, I think. And we formed new pi bonds uh, for this bond that involves the star and for this bond that involves the star. Isn't there a double bond um, on that? Yep, yeah, very good. And we were forming this double bond over here. You can always check, because remember, in the forward reaction, we took three double bonds and made them into one double bond. Well, then in the retro reaction, we have to take one double bond and make them into three double bonds. It looks like I should, like I should take my own advice and start always counting the double bonds, because I always tend to get lazy and forget one of those double bonds. All right, that's how to do the retro deals alter reaction. Now, how would you know as a clue when you should do a retro deals alter on a synthesis problem? Well, look at the starting material. If the starting material is a six-membered carbon ring with a double bond, that's a strong clue that you should do a retro deals alder because that's the only thing that retro deals alder works on on this, on this next test. So if the product has a six-membered ring with a double bond, that means that you should probably use a forward deals alder as your synthesis. And if the starting material has a six-membered ring with a double bond, that's a clue that you should do the retro deals alder. All you need to do a retro deals alder is just add heat. That would be all you'd have to write in that box. Yeah, in and the box you just the, put heat. For the DS Alder one, you would, you would put, put heat and this. Heat and then that. Whole yeah. Thing. Or if this was the starting material, you would write heat and this. Got it. Yeah. But Perfect. notice that a retro deals alder only involves one starting material, so there's nothing to put in the box except for the heat. Okay. 